Kanchenjunga, the highest peak in India and one of the loftiest peaks in the world, is his guardian deity from the day he saw the light of this world. This man of 80 proudly believes himself to be a Rangup or a Rangkup, which means the son of the snowy peak or the son of God. He is a lepcher, a Mongoloid race. He believes that they are the true indigenous people of Sikkim and the Darjeeling district of West Bengal, the primeval people of the world whose origin is as old as the very Himalayas. But many anthropologists, serologists and linguists are of the opinion that they migrated from the east in ancient times and permanently settled down in Sikkim and the Darjeeling district. The Lepcha domain, according to ancient history, extends from Himalaya in the north till Titalia, which is now in Bangladesh after the partition of India. In the east, it reaches till Gibmochi mountain, which is situated at the tri-junction of Sikkim, Bhutan and Tibet. In the west, it spreads till the Arun River in Nepal. This ancient civilization was then called Mayal Liang, or the land of the hidden paradise. Politically and geographically, the Lepchas are now divided into four sects, but culturally and linguistically, they are one people. The four sects are Renjong Mu, the Lepchas of Sikkim, Ilam Mu, the Lepchas of Ilam, the easternmost district of Nepal, Damsang Mu, the Lepchas of Kalimpong, and Pro Mu, the Lepchas of Bhutan. In this episode, we intend to highlight the lifestyle and the linguistics of the Damsang Mu Lepchas of Kalimpong. A Lepcha village is an important social unit with its own political and economic life. The smallest unit for them is the family. Pasang Simik Lepcha is invited today to perform a ceremony in the village. Tung Baung Fat, which is performed after three days of the child's birth. After that, the name-giving ceremony or Chi Fat Ram Fat is done. They have no caste distinctions, but are divided into groups by birth and marriage. These groups are patrilineal clan or exogamous puts, which is believed to have originated from supernatural ancestors. The type of the Lepcha family is nuclear and vertically extended. Research shows the existence of some 68 clan names in Lepcha society. Basang Simik Lepcha cannot forget his childhood village. Because Lepcha architecture has been of the highest order from the earliest time. The art of building the Lepcha house, which is called Rongli, a Lepcha word meaning purely of wood, with nine gigantic pillars of the whole tree size and length, erected on nine big flat boulders. It has four ample large rooms. The first is the sitting room come hearth, where the food is cooked and served to all. The second is the bedroom come altar, where the religious ceremonies are performed. The third room is the pantry room.
and the fourth room is the attic where everything is stored up. Each and every part of the home has a lecture name for it. It is a brilliant witness of high culture and refinement of the ancient lectures, a most unique and excellent specimen of engineering. <laughs> From birth to death, the Boon Ting and the Man, or Lama, perform all the religious ceremonies and rituals. They have their own ancient religion called Boon Thingism and Manism. For the Man religion, priesthood goes by the possession or the manifestation of a supernatural spirit. The Boon Ting and Man do not say their prayers and sermons by reading out from any written scriptures as in other religions, but they chant their prayers orally. There is no recognized cathedral, church or temple or monastery because they believe that just as this world is the very living house of all human beings, so is the heart of every man, the house of God. They believe that God resides in everyone's heart. They are fond of fermented liquor. A homemade liquor called chi is widely used. Surprisingly, some portion of special poisonous herbal leaves are used as a panacea in the drink. This mixture is kept for three days. After three days, it is remixed with fermented millet. They take chi with every meal. Everyone, starting from a pregnant woman to a child, takes this drink. They have the most singular fashion of cooking on earthen ovens. They prepare the earthen oven by digging a large pit in the earth. After that, green leaves are placed at the bottom of the pit. Then, well-cleaned, hard-burnt stones are placed inside the pit bottom. After an hour or two, they squat down to uncover the earthen oven. The lepcha culinary art of baking meat, yam, fish, etc. on the earthen oven needs incomparable mastery of skill, beauty and expertise. Lamaism is the other religious system. The lepchas were converted to Buddhism from the 17th century onwards. With the arrival of the Scottish and foreign missionaries, some were converted to Christianity. Today, the Lepcha, in his purity of language, religion and lifestyle, is a rarity. After centuries of mixing freely with migrant populations, they have absorbed quite a lot of customs of Hindus, Christians and Buddhists. Even their language has not been left untouched and has incorporated many Tibetan words into it. <laughs> the 
with others, they speak Nepali and use the Devanagari script. But the lecture language, which is known as Rong or Mutancho Rong, means the beloved children of God. There are multifold opinions regarding the classification of the lecture language. While some philologists believe that the lecture language belongs to the Tibeto Burman family, there are others who have found its roots in the Austro Asiatic family. But according to traditional belief, the lecture language has developed independently in the course of the past millennia. Even today, a strong element of their old animistic tradition persists. The traditional form of their marriage, which is monogamy, is called agnob, according to Lepcha theory. It is not only a bond between two individuals, but also a bond of two families. There are three stages in a marriage. The first stage is called Niyom Ul. A man generally has to pay a bride price in cash and kind, consisting of a piece of silk cloth, a piece for the girl, ten mounds of chi or thumbas or local alcoholic drink, lithe, song pombu, at least one leg of a cow, and rice for the feast. After the ceremony, generally, the new couple live together. Music occupies a high place in this social life. Agriculture is the main economic pursuit of the Lepchas. As they live in hill tracts, most of the cultivated fields are of small plots formed into terraces. The size of land holding per houses is very small. Their cultivation is of three types, kitchen gardens, cardamom fields, and terracing for rice cultivation. They cultivate rice, maize, millets, potatoes, oranges, vegetables, and other produce. Land and forest are the main sources of their economy. While the land is controlled by individual ownership, the government controls the forest area. Apart from agriculture, they work as laborers, coolies, craftsmen, government employees, and in animal husbandry. Yes. 
bamboo in Lipcha called Po. Lipcha believes that from the very beginning the Pomik Patong, uh, that means bamboos and Lepchas are originated side by side. Without bamboo, Lepcha can't survive in the world. They are well acquainted with 22 varieties of bamboos that are abundantly found in the lower valley, up to 1,200 feet high. This hollow, woody, tree-like plant plays a most important factor in their art and their architecture. The Lepchas have their own folklore and folk tales. This is a fern fruit and this is used particularly in the diabetes. Their attitude to traditional Medicare is positive. The Lepcha medicine men have built their experience through generations, often over centuries. They have superstitions that if the secrets of the wonderful uses of plants is revealed to unauthorized persons, the efficacy of the plants will be reduced to nothing. Thus the primitive system of the treatment by the Lepcha medicine men is fast disappearing. It seems that modernization is now working against their traditional knowledge. Globalization has a wide impact on their lives. But are they really able to cope with changing times? Is the old Pasang Semik Lepcha really happy at this urbanite hobnobbing? 99% Lepchas are remaining in the remote valley, villages where so far no communication is being done by either local administration our block development officer and agriculture de department, they unable to reach their remote area. You, the officer, may, any officer may visit. You can see the condition at your naked eye. In the midst of this enigma, they are fighting valiantly to save their ancient linguistic heritage. There is at least one primary school for every two villages, but the high schools are in town. It is fundamentally a monosyllabic language, although a great number of words have modifying prefixes, which are always used in conjunction with a word to give a different sense so that practically the words become bisyllabic. The alphabet, which is known as Kakha, consists of signs. Thirty-five consonants. Eight vowels.
Lepcha grammar, as you understand, is not based on the principle of Latin grammar, which you normally read in schools and colleges and anywhere. Lepcha language is a scientific language in the sense that we have systems like uh, the parts of body or anatomy. Uh, all the good parts starts from A, like Atyak means head, Abum means mouth. These are all good parts. All the bad parts start from T, the private parts. Um, pubic here is the uh, newt. Nose is Tuknom. The same time you go around Darjeeling district or Sikkim, most rivers names starts from R, like Rangnyu is Tista, Rongit is Rangit. Most trees names starts from S, like Songlok, Sangli. Uh, in lecture language, the pronunciation of words are very uniform. We have a unique book called Lezong. The scholars have described it as power of words. And this unique book is one of the only book in the world you will find. There are still ancient Lepcha manuscripts found on different topics, which are carefully preserved by the orthodox Lepchas. We produce altogether 6,660 different sounds. I was, I was 18 years old. In the 19th century, General G.B. Mainwaring wrote the first Lepcha grammar in 1876 and then compiled the first Lepcha dictionary in 1898. According to Mainwaring, it is a very old language and is even older than Sanskrit and Hebrew. According to H. H. Rishle, the third King Namgyal who ruled over Sikkim from 1700 to 1717 had invented the Lepcha script. But Lepcha tradition says that it was Long Tham Sang Thing who had first invented this script and it was expanded, developed and enlarged by Thi Kung Men Sa Long who was a great lecture literateur. The lecture language is today losing its perspective. But along with the aged, the youth is also determined to ensure the life in this language. We come to the lecture night school at four till half past five. I think lots of our students have to walk quite a way to get to school. Um, a few of them definitely over half an hour. Obviously there's a lot of hills and things to climb up. So it's quite probably quite a struggle for the younger children especially. Uh, the sad uh, thing is that uh, the Lepcha language has not been uh, recognized and introduced in schools and colleges in the Darjeeling district. Our children have to compete with others in alien languages. Therefore, unable to compete with them, with the others, Lepcha children are not doing well in schools. In the Lepcha existence, death and birth are inextricably linked with the Kanchenjunga. There are three alternative methods for the disposal of a dead body. Cremation, burial, or throwing the body into the river. Lamas are summoned immediately after death to help the soul of the deceased reach heaven. The dead body is kept in the house till one to forty-nine days according to the Lama's decision. The death ceremony is called Sanglian. On the third day after the Sanglian, a prayer flag is erected. A year after death, some more money prayer flags are set up and a memorial ceremony called Lunjuk is performed by the Lamas. 
they are fighting valiantly, fighting for adequate educational infrastructure, fighting for proper medical and health care, fighting against the adversities of mountain life. And probably this perception of struggle has taught them a unique philosophy concerning birth and death. Death. How Pasang Semik Lepcha loves this word without any fear. He is convinced he will meet his forefathers after death at the high celestial pinnacle where they are waiting for him. He knows that his permanent abode is there in the bliss of the Kanchenjunga from where he will take off to a new life towards a new destination.